are going to discuss new topic that is Tabus Caldinus theorem one and theorem two. Theorem one is to find area of revolution. Let us discuss how the area of revolution is working. Now you can see over here there is an axis axis of rotation you can say this axis is horizontal now just think on this axis if i am taking a semi circular arc as shown in the figure this is the semi circular arc now i want to revolve this semi circular arc about this axis up to 360 degree like this then imagine what will happen which type of object will form by rotating the semicircular arc up to 360 degree continuously like this we will obtain a sphere sphere which is a hollow sphere okay so we have to calculate area surface area of this hollow sphere now for that what is the statement of the theorem just read the statement of the theorem first what theorem says theorem one is the area of surface of revolution area of surface of revolution is equal to the length of the generating curve times the distance traveled by centroid of the curve while the surface is being generated means what here statement is quite tough so concentrate on the formula first area which we have to find area of surface of evolution is equal to l times theta times y bar in this what is a what is a so a means area of the figure going to be generated so here sphere is going to be generated so we have to calculate area of the sphere now what is this l l means length length of what length of this semi circular arc which is trying to be revolved okay so the object which is revolving about certain axis that length we have to put in this formula what is theta theta means angle of revolution so angle of revolution is 360 degree so theta will be 360 degree what is y bar so y bar of this particular part means center of gravity distance of center of gravity actually from the reference axis from the axis of rotation so here you can see in the figure in the semi circular arc this is the center of gravity so up to bottom axis means axis of rotation this distance is as you know in the formula y bar is equal to 2r by pi so now here it is written that a is equal to length of generating curve theta is equal to angle of revolution and y bar is equal to distance of center of curve from the axis about which the curve is rotated now think all the values what is l first l means length of the semi circular arc what is length of the semi circular arc that is pi r what is theta 360 so taking in radians it is 2 pi what is y bar so y bar is equal to 2r by pi as shown in the figure now replace all the values in the formulas let us see what happen in the formula so in the same formula of area of revolution area is equal to l theta y bar so replace all the values you will get area as it is what is length of the semi circular arc as i said it is pi into r theta and y bar we have to replace now now what is theta and y bar pi r as it is theta means 360 degree angle of revolution that is equal to 2 pi and y bar is equal to 2r by pi as earlier shown in the figure so by doing simplification we will get area is equal to 4 pi r square so this is the very simple method to get the area of a sphere so by semi circular arc by revolving the semi circular arc about 360 degree up to horizontal we will get a hollow sphere as a revolutionary figure and we will get the surface area is equal to 4 pi r square theta is equal to 360 degree means 2 pi over here y bar is equal to distance of the centroid of 2d element means semi circular arc which is 2 r by pi so here it is the completion of theorem number 1 theorem number 1 will give you area of revolution now let us see 
what theorem number theorem number two will give. Before that, let us see some more examples. In the first example, in the first derivation, we just have studied about the sphere. Now, in this case, you can see in this case, if you rotate a line, if you rotate a line like this up to this horizontal x-axis, about this horizontal x-axis up to 360 degree, then what happens? Then by rotation of these lines, you will get continuous cylinder means horizontal cylinder by revolving like this by revolving the line you will get the horizontal cylinder which volume of which is given by pi r square h so you also can find this with the help of same method in the second example about axis rotation one inclined line is rotated then what happens about this axis when the inclined line is rotated, it will form a cone-like element like this. To 60 degree, it will form a cone like this. Volume of which is one third pi r square h, which is also can be find out with the help of same procedure. Let us go to the theorem number two. Here is the theorem number two to find volume of the particular element. Let us first check the statement. In the theorem two, the volume of a body of revolution is equal to generating area times distance traveled by the central of that particular area while the body is being generated means as i said the statement is very tough so concentrate on the formula volume is equal to area theta by bar now what is area area is equal to uh, the particular area of generating lamina means which we are rotating let us discuss later Theta is equal to angle of revolution, means 360 degree always. Y bar is equal to distance of the center of this particular lamina, which is rotated from the reference axis, means from the axis of rotation. Now let us see the figure. In this figure, what is the area which is going to be rotated? It is semicircle. In the first case, it is semicircular arc, means 2D element. Okay, so must remember this while we are calculating area we will rotate 2D element. While we are calculating volume, we will rotate 2D element. Okay. I am repeating and correcting again. While finding area, while finding area, we will rotate 1D element, 1D linear element. While finding volumes, we will rotate 2D elements means areas. Find area, rotate line. Find volume, rotate area. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is semicircular area. So, what is area of this semicircle? It is pi r square by 2, as you know. What is theta now? It is always 360 degree means 2 pi. And now, what is y bar? So, y bar equal to distance of this CG from the axis of rotation, means this vertical distance. As you know, with the help of formula, this vertical distance is 4 r by 3 pi. By revolving this, up to 180 degree okay if you revolve up to 180 degree means pi radian then you will get hemisphere okay now let us see what happens with the formula in this formula the figure is rotated up to 180 degrees so hemisphere is going to be generated now as per the formula volume is equal to a theta y bar in which area is equal to area of semicircle which is pi r square by 2 Theta is now only pi, means 180 degree, as the object is generated only up to 180 degree. And y bar is equal to 4r by 3 pi, distance of the CG from the axis of rotation. So by doing the simplification, we will get volume of the hemisphere is equal to 2 third of pi r cube. In this calculation, we have taken theta is equal to 180 degree, means pi only, and y bar is equal to 4r by 3 pi. So this is the first case in which the object is rotated up to 180 degree and hemisphere is going to be generated. Now let us check some two more cases. In the first case, you can see over here one rectangle, one rectangle is generated, is going to be rotated about horizontal axis. Then what happens? By rotating this rectangle, we will get a cylinder. We will get actually a solid cylinder. Okay, in the first case, only line is going to be revolved, then both the ends, both the ends are open. 
so only line is rotated and cylinder is generated in this case the particular closed rectangle is going to be revolved so closed cylinder is going to be generated solid cylinder is going to be generated in the second case an inclined triangle like this right angled triangle right angled triangle is going to be revolved so we will get conical element actually so solid cylindrical cone is going going to be formed so with the help of this inclined line like rotating about 360 degree we will get a solid cone so this is the method by which we can calculate any areas or any volumes of the closed figure so we will see some numericals based on this method in the upcoming lecture so practice this theory at your own at your home this theory is very very much important from the gtu exam point of view so till then goodbye let us see the examples in the next lecture